berubah banget sih berubah banget sih karena dunia teknologi sekarang ini bisa dibilang itu uh, mematikan pekerjaan seseorang boleh dibilang dalam peribahasa kata dunia dalam genggaman melalui satu gadget Kita harus percaya diri dan berani menghadapi tantangan-tantangan kompetisi global. Harus berani. Without ambition or without the strong will, we cannot achieve the dream that we want. Kita harus yakin bahwa kita bisa menjadi salah satu negara terkuat di dunia. China is uh, pretty much top of the world in terms of technology adoption and I do believe uh, we should be able to eventually uh, cost the gap. Jam jadi Indonesia yang menguasai ilmu pengetahuan dan teknologi kelas dunia. And we are involved to a more efficient network based on the new technologies. In next decade what other country or what uh, developed country have right now Indonesia going to have as well. May is celebrating her 21st birthday with her university classmates. They come from different parts of Indonesia and plan to stay in Jakarta now that they've graduated. I personally, uh, I'm a city person. I love to watch the city lights and as you can see, Jakarta is full of skyscraping buildings, yeah. And um, seeing the lights like this, it's so beautiful, I love it. In 2022, almost 2 million Indonesians graduated from college. But there's one thing that troubles many of them. Yeah, maybe the job, mainly the job. The opportunity to get a job. Yeah. Yeah. Because people, yeah, yeah, because people. that's too much people that fighting for a job. So the, the, the competitions to find a job. Especially in Jakarta. Yeah. So would you guys like to, you know, come to work for a tech firm? Would you? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Uh, someone asked me, would you go there to job, to work? I will. Good. Yeah, because of the salaries, they're good on salary. Mm -hmm. Especially the salaries. <laughs> yeah. We're Gen Z, it's about salary. Yeah, job, they're <laughs> working for salary. One place where they may find their dream job opportunity is the coffee sector. Top selling SKU is called Memory of My Ex-Girlfriend. <laughs> Kopi Kenangan is a rising grab-and-go coffee brand with more than 900 stores across Indonesia and Malaysia and over 5,000 employees. You know, that joke actually becomes a $1 billion joke. Indonesians are among the world's biggest coffee lovers, but the country lacks its own global coffee brand. If you go to London, if you go to America, you always see a cup of Java, a cup of Sumatra. Java coffee is very famous, but when uh, people ask you, have you seen a coffee cafe concept from Indonesia? You have never actually seen one. But our ambition is to become a global coffee company representing uh, you know, high quality Indonesian coffee to the world. I think the future is the technology. Technology can help to close the gap 
and make sure that you reach more customers. With technology, I can amplify the reach and ensure that it's being followed through and executed. However, on the path to establishing his coffee empire, Edward encountered a major challenge, finding enough talent. Click, pay, deliver. The Kopi Kanangan concept also needed solid support from an innovative tech team, especially with demand surging. We actually did the research together with uh, other unicorns in Indonesia. In China and India, there are millions of engineers graduating from uh, universities every year. In Indonesia is the fact that there is an undersupply of engineers. To supplement his local team, Edward turned to a chief technology officer 5,000 kilometers away. Monday, you will get everything ready, at least for the company setup, right? And then for the data, metadata, UM. We have two countries in two countries. The design, research, and design are in China. The design, research, and IT services are in Indonesia. Tell my CTO, right? Please download, um, you know, Yum China app, Starbucks app, Luckin app, because those three are very, very good, right? I think it's such a waste if we don't take inspiration from them. So, in China, many of the things that have happened in the past are happening now. Because they are very willing to take the experience of China. It's, I think, we are very proud of ourselves. And the inner team of the Chinese team has a Chinese team. Actually, they are also very proud of themselves. So, they have never been afraid of saying that we have a Chinese team. They have never been afraid of saying that we have a Chinese team. They have never been afraid of saying that we have a Chinese team. They have never been afraid of saying that we have a Chinese team. Using the best experience of both countries, Edward is steadily expanding his local team. Indonesia currently ranks fifth in the world in terms of new startups. This success has its origins 10 years ago. Right? So definitely, uh, you know, China is uh, pretty much top of the world in terms of technology adoption. Uh, last time I went to China, I believe that everything is digital. Pak Jokowi, our president, really put emphasis on uh, putting fast internet to Indonesia. And I do believe that Indonesia is on the way there. In 2013, only around one in seven Indonesians had access to the internet. That same year, the Maritime Silk Road Initiative was unveiled to the world in Indonesia. Soon after new president Joko Widodo took office in 2014, Indonesia launched a massive infrastructure development project with China involved. A key part of President Widodo's project was building a high-speed railway. Another was developing the digital infrastructure. Indonesia has thousands of NN. It make it very difficult to develop the fixed network and the 4G is really important here. In launching the digital revolution, top of the agenda was creating a nationwide 4G network. Chinese tech firms became key partners in this process. Now, uh, we are a major contributor for the digital economy here. Uh, we cooperate with almost every operators here for the mobile network from the 2G era to the 5G era. We are a mobile first company actually because uh, another data that is very interesting as well, uh, internet desktop penetration is one of the lowest in the world. But then uh, mobile penetration in Indonesia is more than 90%. The spread of the 4G network has brought significant lifestyle changes across Indonesia's 13,000 islands. Nama Hadi Sarwanto, pekerjaan sementara ini ya bantu-bantu kurir. Dengan adanya handphone ini ya mungkin sekitar tujuh tahun ke sini lah ke belakang. Itu istilahnya masyarakat sangat antusias cara penggunaan handphone. Masyarakat enggak ke kota. Belanja yang tadinya langsung ke sana, sekarang lebih banyak ke online itu. Early each morning, a ferry from Jakarta carrying packages and passengers arrives at the small port on the island. Serwanto comes to collect the packages which he will deliver, sometimes even using a boat, 
to take them to the recipients on other scattered small islands. Yeah. Ya karena saya menjadi kurir karena kebutuhan yang pasti mas kebutuhan hidup karena menghidupi anak empat yang dua tadinya kuliah. In delivering these packages, Sawanto is contributing to an industry worth over 5 billion US dollars annually. More and more business models that have proved successful in China are being seen on the streets of Indonesia. Nama saya Marcelo Ferdian, usia, usia, usia saya 28 tahun. Saya sudah berkeluarga, anak saya tiga. Dari lahir, dari uh, saya, dari papa saya kecil, nenek saya kecil di sini. Sekitaran hampir ada 100 tahun lebih lah di sini. Keren aja udah. Di kota-kota lain nggak ada yang seperti Jakarta. This is a city that runs on two wheels. The 33 million people living in Greater Jakarta own more than 17 million motorcycles. Amid the concrete jungle, beneath the neon lights, the soundtrack to Indonesia's rapid growth and prosperity is provided by the constant roar of engines and honking of horns. Marcel provides for his wife and three children by operating an Ojek or motorcycle taxi. Keluar pagi jam 6, sehari saya bisa menghabiskan waktu sampai 15 jam. 15 sampai 16 jam. Lebih pengennya sih uh, saya sendiri jadi pemain sepak bola sih. As a boy Marcel dreamed of representing his country at football. But with three children, making ends meet outweighs his love of the game. Dan di kemudian hari apapun yang terjadi untuk keluarga, saya akan bertanggung jawab untuk keluarga. Seperti itu. Kalau untuk penghasilan yang saya ingin targetin selama saya ngojek ini, saya sih punya target selama satu minggu saya harus mendapatkan uang itu sekitaran 2 juta rupiah atau sekitaran 2 juta 500. Jujur pribadi, saya juga sudah berkali-kali mencoba melamar ke pekerjaan, ke sana, ke sini, ke sana, ke sini. Itu susah banget sih. Marcel is a Gen Z Indonesian. Of its population of 274 million, the fourth largest in the world, over half are Gen Z and millennials. This youthful population is a boon for economic growth, but it could also be a cause of instability. By the end of 2023, Indonesia's first high-speed railway, the China-built Jakarta Bandung High-Speed Railway, is expected to go into operation. Its expanding infrastructure and huge young population, combined with good bilateral relations, are making Indonesia a favored destination for Chinese internet giants and venture capital. From online ride-hailing and delivery, to new retail, Indonesia is becoming a regional leader in the digital revolution. Marcel, when he registered as an online ride-hailing driver five years ago, earned twice the minimum wage in Jakarta. It's still not a lot, but it's enough to encourage him and his children to dream. Uh, 
uh, saya bisa menghasilkan uang sehari itu kisaran 300 sampai 400 ribu seperti itu kalau untuk pendapatan uh, ojek online Alhamdulillah saya lebih puas itu jadi pemain sepak bola sih lebih dari saya seorang ayah karena saya pengennya memang melihat generasi sepak bola ini bagus gitu saya pengennya anak laki-laki saya ini jadi pemain sepak bola sih internasional lah Halo. Halo. Hai. Hai. Ya, very love my job ya. Yeah. Have a chance to learn the new things like uh, machine learning and also the AI. Uh, younger generation in Indonesia are becoming more tech savvy. Uh, I just want to maybe uh, I want to build my own business ya. Yeah. Achieving a higher position uh, in my current company. Uh, maybe in 10 years in Indonesia, um, all the technology has been adapted, like uh, all the car also replaced with the electric car. Without ambition or without the strong will, we cannot achieve uh, the dream that we want or the vision that we want. We have so many young talent in here, but, and by the next decades, the young talent will be grown up. So I think, I think a new start of era. Okay, I think Indonesia is have uh, opportunity to competing with uh, another country. What other country or what uh, developed country have right now, Indonesia gonna have as well. From offices with their white collar employees to the streets that are the workplace of couriers and ride hailing drivers. Indonesia today is one of the world's fastest growing economies. A vision of a shared future. From building a high-speed railway to developing the digital economy, Indonesia and China are forging ahead together along the new Silk Road. <laughs>